Uh, I'm going to present a paper where we are, we are looking at the impact of refugees on the environment uh, in Africa. Uh, and, and basically, um, refugees have been reported to deteriorate the environment um, in, in the hosting communities. Uh, and mainly, uh, what case studies suggest is that they would deteriorate the environment because of land clearance. Basically, you need space uh, to, for, for refugee camps, but also because of the engagement into uh, extractive activities. Uh, actually, um, there, there have been a lot of economic analysis on the impact of refugees on um, hosting economies, but not really looking at the impact on the environment. And uh, there have been a few uh, studies looking at vegetation cover by satellite and, for example, in regions like uh, Darfur, Sierra Leone or the Sahel, but the evidence is rather mixed. So, in a recent paper, uh, we, we basically uh, argue that it's not very surprising to find mixed results because the direct detrimental impact on the environment might be compensated by economic effects. So, we know from the literature that, for example, refugees may constitute a very cheap labor force. In addition, um, you may have an increase in demand for agricultural products uh, in refugee hosting areas. Therefore, farmers may respond to that incentive to expand uh, agricultural production. So we decided to actually uh, test uh, um, this kind of uh, mechanism by uh, exploiting uh, data on the location and the size of the refugee camps in Africa between 2000 and 2016. And we relate this uh, location of refugee camp and the size of the refugee camp with satellite-based indicator being the, one of the standard indicators, the vegetation um, um, coverage, uh, such as, for example, the Enhanced Vegetation Index, but also other satellite-based indicator like capturing vegetation burning, the abundance of land, uh, or, for example, uh, what is called the Anson data set uh, with data on different stages. So our findings are the following. If you use one of the standard uh, indicator of vegetation coverage, we actually uh, do not find that refugees uh, lead to exacerbate the environment. Uh, we actually find a slightly positive impact on vegetation uh, condition, uh, even if this, Im this impact is uh, rather sl uh, small in magnitude. However, uh, when we use uh, other indicators like the Hansen dataset, we do find that the inflows of refugees is associated with uh, increased deforestation. Uh, so to, to, to give you the, the picture, an increase by 10% in the presence of refugees would translate into a fall uh, of about 16% in uh, tree cover. However, when we, we dig in a bit in the analysis, we find this, uh, this refugee-induced deforestation is not associated with uh, vegetation burning or with um, abundance of land by the hosting population. It's actually associated with um, uh, uh, an increase in the conversion from dominant forest land to dominant crop lands. So it suggests that actually farmers are responding uh, to some incentive to increase agricultural production. We also find that uh, agricultural productivity is uh, also increasing. So, um, what, what does it mean? Uh, it means that basically we do not find systematic evidence that refugees contribute to deforestation through their engagement into uh, extractive uh, activities, but actually um, that it's more in line with farmers responding to incentive to increase agricultural production and also intensify uh, agricultural production. Uh, so just to conclude, I think um, this is just the first step. Uh, of course, that would be interesting to, to look more at also level data to really see whether we have some agricultural change in agricultural practices. But overall, it suggests that refugees may be uh, may, may contribute to the development of agriculture in refugee hosting area, even though it may require, it may call for programs uh, targeting uh, conservation in areas surrounding camps.